du? Hmm? Very nice. I just get that sense. We just watched Elf. We just watched Elf the other night, so you get the whole Santa naughty and nice list. You have to watch yeah. Elf at least once a year. I got great ideas right here. <laughs> oh, you're an angry elf. Yeah, there you go. That's one of the funniest lines. You're an angry elf. Hello, cat. Hello. <laughs> Does somebody need a hug? Do we want to? Uh, we can. We can at least do my agenda, which I think is. You just got minutes. minutes. We, we can have start you down there? for first anyway. Okay. Should we get going? Yep. Trustee Fenn. Here. Trustee Dodge. Here. Here. Trustee Ruzik. Technology and innovation and performance. You got an acronym for this yet, or? It just it, Mike Carroll always got great pleasure out of saying the Tippy Committee. So. <laughs> Is there a motion? Approval minutes. Move to approve the minutes of the regular meeting of Technology, Innovation, and Performance Improvement Committee of November 19, 2018. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Public Works approval minutes. Move motion. to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, main pump station motor control center replacement. Yeah. Madam Chair, um, this was a bid uh, that is for the replacement of the motor control center at the main pump station. Uh, the motor control center controls all the electrical that um, comes into the station and controls all the pumps, HVAC, anything, uh, anything that's electric there. Uh, the station was originally constructed in 1985. The equipment is original to the station. Um, it's reaching the end of its, its uh, life expectancy. We're having a difficult time finding replacement parts. Um, there have been a number of changes that have been made over the years. Uh, currently, the automatic transfer for the emergency generator um, is, is less than uh, what we'd like to see for an emergency piece of equipment. Uh, so we're, we're looking to upgrade that. Uh, the bid was uh, sent out through, our, through BidNet to over 300 um, firms. Uh, 21 firms did download the equipment. We also sent it to four, um, four contractors that, that we were aware that did this type of work. There was a mandatory pre-bid meeting. Two bidders, uh, potential bidders, attended that meeting. Uh, un unfortunately, only one person or one company bid on the uh, project. Um, the, the other company, uh, they ran into some problems uh, more paperwork problems in getting their insurance, so they were unable to um, submit the bid uh, through just through an error on their part. The bids did come in higher than expected. Uh, we, we asked our engineer to um, help us understand why that occurred. Uh, they indicated that um, the workload that is currently out there um, is extremely high, so it's not a very competitive market to get work. Um, the cost, though, uh, though it is higher than we anticipated, uh, we're still recommending to move forward with this project. Um, delaying the project is, is actually, it's, it's unpalatable um, because the lead time for procuring this equipment is, is six to eight months. So if we don't award right now, um, this would push the project back at least one year. The, um, if, if it's approved at committee and board in January, uh, the equipment would be ordered to allow us to continue uh, or proceed with the implementation of the project in the fall of 2019. The work cannot be done during the summer. It can only be done during the off season. So if we wait, it would not be able to be done until uh, 2020. We do have funds in the water fund uh, to cover this, uh, the uh, extra cost. But just uh, so, is it just the lead time to get it through the process? And this is kind of like a standardized unit that's to be manufactured, or is it essentially a custom unit with that much lead time? Every every motor control center is custom. Everyone. And there's no options around that going forward. No. No. And you can't have this system go down, otherwise nobody gets water. 
Is that a problem? Yes, yeah, so I think it might be. You wouldn't be able to wash all that gorgeous Exactly, hair. smart guy. <laughs> smart guy. Madam Chair? Uh, trustee Dodge. <laughs> move to recommend to the Village Board to accept the proposal from Gibson Electric Company of uh, Downers Grove, Illinois, for main pump station MCC replacement in the amount of uh, $1.7 million, $1.62 to uh, 00, plus 79800 for contingency. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Sportsplex Phase 1 HVAC Energy Savings Contract and Improvement. The HVAC problem um, improvement at the uh, Sportsplex is one of those projects that's going to be um, loved by the patrons, but they're going to hate getting there. Um, one of the challenges uh, with doing this work is um, all of the, um, the, the entire upstairs uh, essentially needs to be shut down in order to allow the work to be done. There are 11 uh, units that are up in the ceiling that will need to be replaced. They're replacing a large um, large unit on the roof, which will require some structural adjustments. So we've been working with the Recreation Department to try and come up with a game plan to um, maintain operation of the facility, uh, but still allow the work to be done in a, in a, a safe and efficient manner. Uh, we did explore uh, doing the work all at all at one time, um, the the uh, cost savings would be about twenty five thousand dollars, not insignificant, um, and the time savings would be about two weeks. But even with those cost savings, the amount of patrons uh, that the recreation department um, would would likely lose because that's where all of the exercise equipment is, uh, it would it makes it unpalatable again. Um, so we're, we're requesting uh, um, to move forward with this project. And um, again, there is a long lead time. And the work would uh, generally plan on being started um, sometime this summer. And what they're going to do is they're going to close off certain sections at a time. We've, we've been able to, uh, in working with um, CTS group, and I do have two representatives, David Adam Voss and uh, Jaime Frausto here, if there are any specific questions. Um, they've been able to uh, divide it into three uh, distinct areas. So um, one area would be closed, equipment would be relocated to allow access to that area, and um, there would be some reduced services because obviously all the equipment wouldn't be able to fit in the other two areas. Trustee Dodge? Um, yeah, so I guess John and Carrie, who then is on point for communicating this to the residents? Rec? Yeah, actually, um, CTS group, uh, they, have a, um, they have a person that will help uh, create some um, placard or uh, signs um, and, and help with that communication. We've done similar projects. Uh, in the past, we've done the uh, shutting down the, the locker rooms, rooms at the health and uh, yeah, at both at um, the Orland Park Health and Fitness Center um, and at uh, at the Sportsplex CTS group was was a, a great help in uh, facilitating uh, facilitating projects like that. What about direct to our users? That that communication is done through um, through the recreation department. They have lists of all their users, so they do communicate. They're, they're actually great at So they've got a plan, they know the message, they've got the start dates, that's ready to go? We've been working on this um, intently with them, yes. And, and the start dates are not fully set yet. That, that's, still, um, that's still yet to be determined, Depending the exact start time, date. Uh, once, once this gets approved, then CTS group will move, move forward with ordering the equipment. Once they order the equipment, they'll better understand what the lead time the specific lead time is and the specific delivery date. Gotcha. All right, well, I guess the rec knows what they need to do and when they need to do, and that's set. That's messaging. Yep. They're, they're fully aware of it, and uh, they're on board. Got it. Madam Chair? Trustee Dodge. Move the recommend of the Village Board to accept the proposal for the Sportsplex Phase 1 HVAC energy savings contract and improvements from CTS Group of Chicago, Illinois, not to exceed an amount of $805,685. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. ILWARN mutual aid participation. Madam Chair. Trustee Carroll. Uh, Ruzik. Oh, you're going to, is he going to present it first? Or? Well, he's been 
doing it first. But okay, go ahead. No, go ahead. So <laughs> you're still um, right, Trustee Carroll. <laughs> Ilwarn is the um, Illinois Water and Wastewater Agency Response Network. It provides um, it provides us with an opportunity to utilize other agencies in times of emergency. It puts together um, basic uh, agreements. So when an emergency does occur, that's all we have to do is go to their website, indicate the specific needs, and that gets sent to all the other um, communities that are part of Illwarn, and they're, they're able to provide us with assistance. Conversely, um, when we have the ability to provide assistance for other agencies, we're <coughs> able to do that. Any other questions or comments? Pretty straightforward. Trustee Ruzik? I move to recommend the Village Board to approve the agreement <coughs> for participation in the Illinois Water Waste Wastewater Agency Response Network. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Snow removal contractors contract snow removal services payment. Madam Chair. Trustee Dodge. Move to recommend to the Village Board to authorize payment for contract snow removal services for the 2018-2019 snow season. Various uh, snow contractors amount not to exceed the 2018 rollover and 2019 budgeted amounts. Second. All in favor? Aye. That's pretty standard stuff, right? It, yes. it is. It, in case we go over $20,000, we hope that it doesn't snow for the rest of the season. It's unlikely. If we sure. go over twenty thousand dollars with any one. northeastern Illinois, John, just think <laughs> northeastern <laughs> Illinois. Funny. Ready? Yep. Water main break emergency repair at 151st and 88th Avenue. This is just we had a break, we had to fix it, now we have to pay for it. Correct. Funny it was a big one. <laughs> Madam Chair. <clears throat> Trustee Ruzik. I move to recommend to the village board to approve the use of water fund contingency funds and recommend authorizing payment to Aries Inc. of Tinley Park, Illinois for water main break emergency repairs at 151st Street and 88th Avenue in the amount of $72,564.82. Yeah, $72, Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. If, I, if I just could add, this item sure. is, is going direct to board tonight so I can facilitate payment to the contractor. When they do the work, John? It was uh, November 14th was the, um, the break, and the work was done on that uh, next Saturday. We actually had to delay it so we didn't impact school operations. Yep. Adesta LLC fiber installation project. Oh, you want to go explanations? We've, we've been working um, with the DESTA to implement a fiber network. The total cost of the project was $500,000. As part of that, we had $15,000 worth of contingency. Uh, unfortunately, uh, we ran into uh, a few issues that we exceeded that contingency. I'm asking for an additional $15,000. Um, at the police station, we did some uh, additional work there, uh, tying the fiber into their, into their networks. Uh, we had a few problems on some conduits um, that that required uh, partnering with Adesta between Adesta and Public Works to complete the work, and it just exceeded our our contingency. Otherwise, it's gone overall pretty well. It's working great. Yeah, I mean we have redundant paths between Village Hall, <coughs> Police Department, and Public Works at this time with that fiber. We have connectivity up to 131st Water Tower behind Sandberg. Um, and now I've just literally with this, we've been able to increase the footprint to all the facilities now, yeah. including Orland Health Fitness as of today, um, as part of the, the initial rollout. But we did add some extra fibers um, to make it simpler for the police department to connect back to the fiber network. So we ran those 200 foot jumpers back to their um, data center within the, uh, the police department. Um, and as John alluded to, there was some issues on our 143rd and LaGrange where um, the conduit was crushed, and we had to replace those con those pieces of conduit to be able to pull through. Just normal day in life crushed or construction crushed. It, 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 it could have happened at any any time that yeah. that conduit. So we don't know who there. did it, so we can go get our money back. No, unfortunately. <laughs> nice try. Yeah, what the hell? You gotta ask. Yeah, you gotta ask. What the heck? Is there a motion? Chair. Yeah, Madam Chair. Trustee Dodge. Move to recommend to the Village Board to approve the change order from Modesta LLC of Willowbrook, Illinois for an additional cost of $15,503.17. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. 
Fairway Estates Stage 3 Drainage and Water Main Improvement. This is a continuation of a project that was started in 2017. In 2017, we, we hired uh, Burke LLC as a, as a GMP project to um, complete the stormwater improvements uh, that were part of the Maycliff project. In addition to that, we also implemented the first phase of doing water main replacement in the fairway subdivision. In 2018, we adjusted things a little bit and we did the work, uh, the water main work, um, over the winter. It was very uh, outside the box for us. We normally like doing construction work during the construction season. Um, but Burke came to us and, and said that they thought this would be a good fit for this area. The residents in the area um, were, were quite pleased with the, the way the work went. Um, during the winter, nobody is outside. Nobody has their windows open, so the, the noise and, and dust that's created by construction um, is, is uh, not a big deal. Um, they also uh, were, were able to get a little bit extra uh, plowing service because as part of the agreement, uh, the contractor is responsible for uh, clearing the snow because obviously they're, they're, they're digging in the streets and stuff. So, um, so the, the contractor's out there with a loader removing the snow um, uh, uh, in, in, a, in a manner that's a lot, um, a lot more uh, efficient or better than we're able to do with just our plows, though we do partner with them. So uh, we wanted to try uh, and do this project, uh, this type of project again this year um, for the third phase, uh, the 2019 work. Um, and there's still a 2020 work that's anticipated to be done, um, obviously, in, in, in 2020. Uh, also included with this work is the addition of some storm sewers uh, that were identified as part of our, our neighborhood outreach that we did at the very beginning of this work. So we're, we're, we, we identified some issues with residents' assistance, and we're, we're addressing those issues as well. I, uh, I'm oops. sorry, go ahead. Do, do you have no, I was just going to ask John. Yeah. Oh, yeah, go ahead. So, so, John, I mean, there are no issues, no real issues with durability of anything when you're building in winter as opposed to the traditional summer months? I no, mean, in terms of do. breaking ground or any kind of, do you, you're doing the pipes or the materials? No, no, everything, everything is the same. That was one of our concerns was, what, you know, what was the impact on, on anything? And you know, if you're doing any kind of concrete or ceiling joints or whatever, it just you could think of a hundred different things that could, you know, it's not materially impacted by a winter. Then great. Yeah, they're they're not doing the concrete work right now. They are doing uh, the restoration is held off a little bit, but um, but they're they're putting the street back in a manner that that makes it perfectly navigable. Um, there there's no problems. So as far as we know, then no issues with doing construction in winter. Absolutely not. And if, if there were, then I wouldn't have been, I would yeah. not be recommending this. The one, one thing that I will mention is um, what, we, what we do is the, the work that's done right now, uh, digging in the street, we will not do the final restoration of the street pavement until the succeeding year. So we won't be doing the, we'll, we'll, we'll do a patch on those trenches that we cut, but we won't go in and resurface all the roads until the next year. What that well, does, it allows- plants are open and it's warmer, that kind of shit? Well, that's- Or you let it settle. It allows it to settle. It allows and it every, to settle. And, and the residents typically know- Yes. You patch it, but you let it think a little while, and then you come actually finalize yeah. that they got that plan? We communicate that. That's one of the communication points that we do with the right. residents. Yeah, the residents were real acceptable of this program, especially oh. with Schusler Park being over there, mm -hmm. and there wasn't as much traffic congestion or anything. Yep. And no, it's all good. I have a question, John. Um, you make a statement <clears throat> in the staff report that um, you know this model of design build uh, is uh, is favored, in your opinion, over the traditional design bid build because it would require significant water main engineering delaying construction and adding to the cost. Right. One of the, one of the benefits of doing the GMP is we're actually we're, we're moving forward with the design as as construction goes along with a traditional design bid build we have to have a very solid plan that's in place that we we finalize with the um, uh, with an engineering firm then that plan is taken and it, it goes out to bid 
and the specifications that are used have to be right down to the to the nth detail. When we're doing when we're doing the GMP project, we're working with the contractor as as the project moves along. So if there's an adjustment to a fire hydrant, there's there's no added cost for us. Um, what are the cost savings? Would you, if you had to estimate by doing it this way? And from a percentage perspective, maybe ten percent. It's it's not. It, it's not it's not huge. Well, two hundred seventy-five thousand is and huge. <laughs> that's an estimate, um, okay. just because we don't have to go through all of those engineering costs. Mm -hmm. They're still doing engineering. We I still have say, to get an IEPA. Them. Yeah, we still have to get an IEPA permit, but is essentially we're doing it from um, from a, a set of plans that that's drawn on a sheet, and it, it can be it can be a couple pages instead of twenty pages. Mm -hmm. That's that's an estimate. Okay. Just following up on that, Go ahead. Madam Chair. So, so when we first started doing these, it always struck me as a way for us to basically pick someone to work with. They bear responsibility and risk. We write the check, and then you get more stuff done. Correct. 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 Yeah. If we want because to add a fire you guys, it's not on your plate to manage this. They right. manage it. They manage it from start to finish. Not a bad outsourcing model. Any other comments or questions about this project? Is there a motion? Madam Chair. Trustee Ruzic. I move to recommend to the Village Board to waive the bid process and recommend accepting the proposal from Burke LLC of Rosemont, Illinois for the Fairway State Stage 3 Drainage and Water Main Improvement Project with a guaranteed maximum price of $2,714,550. Second. All in favor? If, if I just could interject, this item is also going to direct board. to board um, just so we can make sure that the work is done in the winter. Otherwise, it would have been delayed several weeks while we waited for board approval. No, I, I, I get it. So. Did you call for a vote? Yes, yes I did. Oh, okay. I, said, you said I. I. No, I did. You I did. Think I, said. I, 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 I did. interrupted. Well, I apologize. Say, that's all right. Yeah. Someone interrupted. You're going to say I. We all heard her say I. Did you guys hear her say I? I want to take my official vote. The press heard you say I. I had an I. Uh, <laughs> development <laughs> services, rule of minutes. Move to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Do we have to let, say it louder? Aye. <coughs> Professional Engineering Services with Christopher Burke. Carrie, you want to just describe what this Services contract is? Um, Professional Engineering um, contract with Christopher Burke for uh, 2019. Um, they are keeping their prices constant with their 2010 rates, which is the village. And we split this um, contract with Managing Job Development Services. And are any of these type of services passed back on to um, a developer, or is this a contract that's separate and apart from? Yeah. We do want to hear from you, Carrie. <laughs> Hello. There you All go. Right, there you go. Um, the retainer is not passed on. That okay. is just for provide staff support. They um, do all of our private engineering reviews, and those costs are passed through directly to the petitioner. Got it. Okay. Are there any other questions? Nope. nope. Madam Chair. Trustee Fenton. We would recommend to the Village Board to approve the Professional Engineering Service Contract with Christopher B. Burke Engineering L LTD in the amount of $102,500 per month as outlined in the proposal. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Bill Dolan, Orland, fiscal year 2019. Madam Chair, this is a program that was started back in the recession in 2010 when we had a dip in residential um, startups. Um, and um, over the years, we phased some of the components out, but we are, we, um, are recommending approval of um, the Build Orland that is still the deferral of the permit fees at the time of occupancy. And this is just for single family homes. Madam Chair? Trustee Dodge. Just a quick question. Uh, Carrie, I mean, you know. What do you see in terms of demand for residential construction? For single family homes. Joe turned the microphone off while you weren't looking. <laughs> no, Joe turned yeah, it off. You have, you have, you have. When you, Hello? When you were looking up here, Joe turned it off. Just so you know. I believe it. I believe it. He would he's sneaky. He would do that. I did just have it on though. I did not touch it either. I hurry up, you're gonna run out of time again. Can you hear me now? Yeah, three minutes. <laughs> right. I'm go. not gonna sing. Yeah, three minutes. <laughs> All right. We have a time, you give me um, a one minute warning. 
What we are Merry seeing is um, not a ton of um, single family homes. What we're seeing is a lot of the attached single family homes, which is the attached ranches and villas, which are very, very popular right now. The townhome developments, we're still seeing that. You know, we have the smaller individual subdivisions with maybe three or four lots that you guys have seen come through, you know, periodically. But we're not seeing a big, massive um, demand for single family homes, mostly because we don't have the land available unless you look at Gallagher and Henry's property. And they're not really moving on any of their property. And they really do hold up the majority of the big tracts of land that are available for single family homes. Got it. I mean, so is this it can't just be us right it feels to me this is kind of regional national that the demand for housing product has changed is that fair In yes because i keep i keep the reason i'm asking is i keep seeing you know new family uh single the construction is not doing as well as it used so right. i want to kind of ask what you're seeing we're but, seeing that too we're seeing that it's it's soft now every community is a little bit different from the next so the communities that are the younger communities that i want to say that aren't maturing like we are have more land available and they have land that's owned by a multiple of different owners you're seeing more single family homes being built also i'll be honest with you a lot of those um seem to be like um maybe south of i-80 in the new lennox area some of those are starting to see you're starting to see those pick up a little bit as well but as far as the, what you know our homes were 75 80 percent built out we don't have a lot of land available um, we're starting to see um, not as many of those single-family homes as we used to see in the day gotcha. but the attached single-family is still the driving force in Orland Parks market gotcha thank well, you and I think that has to do with affordability I mean mm -hmm. for a builder to build an attached single-family home is getting two homes on one lot, right? I mean, right. this isn't you know, in demand. Right. So I do think in other communities, there is greater demand. I think it has to do with the affordability of the housing too. So um, unfortunately, to build a home in Orland Park is not what it would take to build in another community. It's one of these newer, younger communities that you're talking about. Our housing starts that we're seeing are the, still the much larger homes that you see built. Um, um, and they're in the more expensive homes that are usually in the four or five hundred thousand dollar ranges is what we're seeing for single family detached and townhomes are obviously lower than that as well yeah yeah that's um, not surprising uh, do we uh we put this on the floor didn't we do we have a motion no we don't do a motion yet right. we need a motion uh, we need a motion just uh madam chair uh, trustee Patton. Move to recommend to the Village Board to approve an extension of the Build Orland program for the fiscal year 2019 to allow the payment deferral of permit fees for new single family <coughs> residential permits. Excuse me, second. Bless <coughs> you. Sorry about that. Aye. Aye. El Mezcal, special use. So, Madam Chair, this is a special use for the existing uh, Mexican restaurant that is located inside the BP um, gas station at the intersection of 143rd and the Grange Road. It has a very, very loyal, very, very um, wide following. Um, they have excellent food and they have been so successful in getting their message of what, what great food they have out that they needed to add some additional seating um, inside that which has triggered a special use permit as noted in the staff report there are some um, conditions tied to the special use um, some landscaping improvements some painting the exterior some connections that we've been looking to get for a while that they've agreed to do as well so this is uh, a good project am i disqualified if i just ate there for dinner tonight well the the, um, no the owner is here <laughs> so no um, my probably all my staff probably ate there today for lunch to be honest <laughs> so they get more business than the gas station actually because i know is they might have saved it, the gas this, station this, if, in case you don't know they were in chicago magazine yes right? we're aware like of it one of yeah places yeah. to eat in Orland Park. No, so. God love them. I mean, yeah. I, I, so, some of the best barbecue in Texas yeah. is at gas station, so. Yeah, it is so, and, the, it is. and the owner, is, she's here tonight if you have any questions for her, but we're, we're excited about the special use and they're doing fabulous business. It's great to hear, so thank you. <laughs> Did you bring samples? Yeah. <laughs> Do you have any, any food with you? Mooch, <laughs> Madam, <laughs> Madam Chair. <laughs> Trustee Dodge. Move to recommend to the Village Board of Trustees approval of special use permit amendment for the, uh, as, uh, excuse me, L. <coughs> Mezcal restaurant to allow a restaurant with seating inside the BP Automotive Service Station 
located 14299 LaGrange in Orland Park is recommended December 11, 2018 planning commission meeting and is fully referenced below. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, good luck. Done. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Yeah, too bad that BP station's 20 cents higher than any other BP station. Yeah, I don't know, quite, quite sure what the hell they're thinking. I don't know, nobody buys gas there. Yeah. They just dump their own. Oh well, yeah. All right, that was fun. You know, John, I'm plugging. You know, older, fatter, and uglier than the last time you saw me. Yeah, I might go I might go by the way of you and my doesn't feel that bad. Your hair will probably color for a day or two. I'm already ugly. You know, it's you not might get, you might get, you might get, you know, you get a shave, a shave, or just buzz it close. Cause this is a, this is basically is a mic shave. So he takes it down with a bit. Yeah, you got some points. Yeah, I'm looking. This is my like almost look. I gotta work. So good luck with the shave. That's sad yeah. to hear about your buddy. What yeah, you? brother-in-law. Brother-in-law, what kind of cancer? Pink red. It's bad. Yeah. Yeah. No, come on.